What is up, world? It's your boy Tommy on the spot, a very beardly Tommy on the spot, uh, coming to you on the day in which baseball will begin its 2024 MLB playoffs. And so when I got to thinking about today's playoffs, it brought me back five years ago. It was my team, the Washington Nationals, finally overcoming their years-long drought of not being able to ever win a playoff series they had defeated the Milwaukee Brewers in the wild card series and at this stage we're getting set to face off with the Los Angeles Dodgers the heavily favored Los Angeles Dodgers in that 2019 wild card series and me well this wouldn't be a wrestling channel if I didn't uh, have a wrestling tie-in here I had been on my way to Orlando Florida I went to the NXT tapings at Full Sail University it was a bucket list thing for me uh, my buddy Steve and I got together and we went to go check out that live taping main evented by Kushida and Gunther who at the time was Walter and uh, it was a pretty good show I think the atmosphere was probably much better than the show itself but upon the conclusion of that show is when you know the the fun really began for us uh, while that was a wonderful experience at that point we left went to go watch game five of the Washington Nationals and the Los Angeles Dodgers where the Nationals again overcame the odds and one of the most improbable runs in the history of baseball en route to winning the 2019 World Series. So in this video, we relive some of that. It was recorded back in 2021 for the two year anniversary of this visit. Uh, the actual date of my visit to Orlando with Steve was on October 9th, 2019. So we got back and recorded this on October 9th, 2021. So almost three years later, it'll finally see the light of day. The reason it was never uh, posted is because the audio here is a little off, but I do still think it's fun content and a great conversation. Hopefully you feel the same. Let me know who you're rooting for to this baseball playoffs. One of the best times of the year, nothing better and nothing beats October. This is joined in session and I even spare you the 15 minutes we went on about my birthday. So in any event, have a good one and enjoy. So two years ago, you and I, uh, had made our way to it was an interesting time period in my life because I was uh going through a transition at work where basically they had told me the company was like in total shambles I didn't like the company too much anyway. I liked portions of the company I didn't love the company they were going through different pieces of it they had to restructure things and taking me out of human resources and bringing me back to management somewhere else um because I work in human resources I I'm always thinking about resumes. I'm always thinking about LinkedIn profiles. I'm always thinking about career trajectories. It wasn't necessarily for me. Uh, and so I don't know if we had made this trip specifically because of that idea. But one of the reasons was because uh, it was I was going to go and figure out if I was going to stay at this current company. Because my wife at the time was five, six months pregnant. I guess it was a couple months pregnant. Three, I guess. And um, I had to pretty much figure out if I wanted to go ahead and stay. Mm -hmm. at, and I need to clear my head and get down there to Florida to go ahead and do it. So I had um, you know, I agreed to come stay with you guys. Ari was coming a couple of days later. Uh, I came earlier, I guess, so that you and I could go to NXT, which what we, was something we had talked about doing. I had thought about it since the beginning of time. <laughs> is at uh, Full Sail University, and I always thought in the footage of when they were doing the TV tapings was kind of like your MTV Spring Break almost, or your Campus Invasion Tour, where it's like they made this look like the coolest come into a campus to have a wrestling show, a WWE-style production on the campus. I just thought, like, I need to get down to Full Sail University to see a show at some point. We had gone to NXT TakeOver 25, and so we put the wheels in motion to go to go to this uh, this taping. I think we were supposed to go the week before, and then something happened, and we got moved back. I don't remember what it was, but we were supposed to go the first time NXT was going to be on USA. And they got moved back one week. Uh, I don't remember why that was. I'm not sure if you did. I don't remember. I, I remember, like, we were trying to find out what days were going to work the best. And I think it was kind of one of those things where you since you were talking with your job about trying to, like, figure out other days off, they, you know, they had kind of landed on the, the week that you guys came down. Well, and I think also was I was interviewing where I'm currently working, because remember, I had the interview 
That's right. Yeah, I think that's probably more what it was. <laughs> uh, I think the day I came to go down to see you was that day, and it was the Yom Kippur. So I was running. I remember I had first first row, first class seats. I randomly got upgraded to first class and thought this meant I could go to town and just start knocking back bevs. And so I was like pounding back drinks. And I was talking to this guy next to me about how great this was here. I was drinking, knocking all these things. And then I got billed for it uh, because it would. <laughs> but I remember I got to the airport and I'm trying to beat sundown. So, I mean, like, I don't exactly follow all the rules of the airport, clearly. Um, <laughs> traveling, yeah, usually no, no. Traveling through. So I'm running down. And I remember I was in uh, North Carolina. So I had to get to Bojangles, my favorite fried chicken place, probably in the world. And I uh, got down there, ate it, ran all the way back, about to board, got sick as a dog, vomited profusely. And then got onto the plane and I could not eat for 24 hours. So then I'd come down to see you guys. And I guess it was that next day that I did, your mother and I went to this service that was like very, very religious. And um, not, not anything wrong with that. I just was not used to what I what I typically did or your mom typically did. Weren't um, prepared for it, I think, probably was, was probably would be the most accurate. Right. And there's certain things, too, where I don't know if this is all it was, but like, the $1,800 minimum donation. I don't know if that was just that particular group of folks, um, but it was very much, it was bizarre. And uh, it wasn't really for us, it was, it was weird. And then you and I that night did go to, um, did go down to go to NXT. But what was funny was, obviously both of us big fans of the Washington Nationals. And leading up to this, I remember we kept watching the series and I was like, you know, if it gets to game five, it's going to be the same night as the NXT show. So we're going to have to go. And you guys keep going to the archives and watch Long Wrestling. There's actually a vlog of this. You can see me wearing the, the Steven Strasberg jersey. Yeah. And we had gone. We had watched it. And I think we kept kind of looking at the score. And then NXT ended. And I remember there was, there was, a, Miller's, there was a Miller's right over there. And I was kicking myself because the week before at that Miller's, which was across the street from NXT, Triple H went to the Millers to say hi to everybody because everyone from NXT went over there. But I don't think we went to that one. I think we went to one closer to where you were. Yeah, we did. Yeah, because yeah, I don't know. I think I don't remember if it was because it was like a ridiculously long wait or like something where we were just like, let's just go back. Yeah, it also wasn't that close to where you lived either. Right. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Or after afterwards, if we had done that. Uh, but we got in there and actually we're getting smashed and um, I don't want to get smashed. We're down 3-1. I think it was 3 nothing originally, and then eventually 3-1. And there's this waiter there. Uh, to this day, I, I, I would love to. <laughs> and he starts, he, he was a mess fan, right? I think so. It was either, yeah, it was either Mets or, or Phillies. Yeah, one of those two. And so he's dogging us for the Nationals. He's mocking, oh, you know, I don't count the World Series, the, world, the wild card win. This is their, for, this is a real series. They're going to lose again. They're never going to get out of the first round. They're awful. They're the worst, blah, blah, blah. And uh, eventually uh, they come back and they tie the game. And uh, I was embarrassingly excited. Like I was. <laughs> wild card game. My movie had me come over with his wife and my wife. And it was awful. The entire game they're, getting, they're losing. And it felt like nowhere they're going to win this game. And then they won, and that was the only time during sports I legitimately was concerned for my well-being because I was so amped up afterwards. I was like, this is not good. Like, I could not second. <laughs> so I was like, I need to try to calm down a little bit. I can't get this involved. Like, I'm not really on the field with these guys. And uh, that one, so that one, they end up coming back tying it. I'm literally like, let's go. I'm like all pumped up. And the guy walks by and says something like, uh, but they're going to lose again. I mean, yeah, maybe they'll make it exciting. The yeah, it, like, he was very nonchalant about the fact that they had just tied it up. He was like, oh, good for them. Yeah, real. I'll troll win this one, huh? And I was like, jeez. And then I think we were like, we, because the next day we had, we had like a whole day planned. And we are like, all right, we'll give it till the ninth. And if it goes to the ninth, we're going to go and leave. And if it gets yeah. through, we'll go watch the game back at home. And then, so we left. And then that 10th inning, they start getting guys on base. Kendrick comes up and hits a grand slam and we were in the car like outside of your house and you were like I guess we should just listen to the end of this because everyone I think I'm sleeping everyone was sleeping at this point yeah 
remember NXT ends at 10 o'clock. This is hours later at this point. We've already eaten a whole meal. So this is close to the past midnight at this point. Yeah, absolutely past midnight. And so he's sitting there. And I think then we walk, we went in to watch the end, if I'm not mistaken. For yeah, them. we were in. I remember exactly where we were. We were turning into the housing development when he hit the Grand Slam. Yeah, exactly. And you have like a very nice quiet area that you live in, too. So like it's the type of thing where it looks like if any loud sound happens, like the whole area is running out. To see, to see. <laughs> um, and then you're in Florida, so who knows? People might have you know a good gun or something down there. And uh, but yeah, so they they the Nats end up going by four, and it's like oh my god, they're gonna beat the vaunted Dodgers and are gonna get to the next round. And uh, just an incredible time. It was one of the uh, and I put it up on my my uh, Twitter earlier today. Uh, if you go back and see it from a few days ago, uh, but it was. Um, an incredible uh, experience, an incredible time, and just so much fun. And it uh, w- one of really the most exciting time periods, really, in my entire life. Uh, and, you know, we woke up uh, to do that walk, that run in the morning. We woke yep. Up, uh, that is the run. I'll never forget this. There is a DVD of John Cena where John Cena has a fan come with him to go and work out. And they asked John, hey, are you going to really give it to this fan? And he said, no, we're going to actually be fun. We're going to go at his speed. We're going to do whatever he wants to do. If I run him into the ground, he'll never want to work out again. And I bring that up because if after that run, I have <laughs> ever again. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was rough because you're following the bouncy ball here. I'm vomiting profusely. I'm pounding back drink <laughs> for a full day. I was in a bad way. And, uh, and then, but the rest of that day was great. We ended up yeah. uh, going. That was when we did Top Golf for the first time. Um, it was great because I think it was like during a weekday, so yeah. able to kind of just do everything. wasn't really long waits for anything. We did the um, the go karts over at Andretti Speedway, I think it's called. Yeah, and it's funny because we actually just went back there a couple of weeks ago, and it was absolutely packed. I remember when we went, we were like. I think the only people in there, like maybe like a handful of other people in the entire, in the entire thing. Yeah. When we were there, yeah, it, it felt like we had the place to ourselves. Cause we also did, cause I remember one of the things I think was like a 3d something or other. Yeah. You're like, look, we can do this, but I gotta be honest. It's probably, it's not what it's known for. And it's probably gonna be pretty bad. And it was, <laughs> <laughs> but we did. Um, and then we came back. I think we ended up going to Disney Springs I feel like we went somewhere because you had to go get we a went to. I don't know if we went to Disney Springs. We went to the Wilderness Lodge. Yeah, we definitely did the Wilderness Lodge. I remember you had to get Amanda like a dessert or something. Oh, so then that probably was at Disney Springs. Yeah. I feel like we did. I don't know what we were doing there. But then we came back and now we've been out the entire day. And then we had to wait until my wife was arriving at the airport and get back on the road to go pick her up from the airport. Uh, <laughs> so. It was insane, and then uh, and then I think we did Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Yep, and and we, and we did a day of Epcot, and we also did a day of the farms in between those two. Oh yeah, that's true. That was a good. That farm is one of the better ones that we've we've been to. We've had a couple here in New York that have never, we always say when we go, it's not never been as good as that farm that we were at uh, in Florida. So that was uh that was a, that was a heck of an epic week, and then I got back into town on Monday. The second I landed, I called my, uh, I had to give my uh, the bo- my boss at the time uh, an answer. I told him I'm going to leave. And he said, you, sir, you know, you just, I don't know if you, you know, I don't know if you know this, but um, you have a child. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, are you sure? Are you serious? I, but, uh, oh, really? but I, I did, I, I, I left and, you know, I think for me, and, and I was very much prepared to not work. Uh, I had a set set up a system where I was not going to work until my wife had given birth. I was going to do some extra things on the side and figure, I mean, obviously going to do eBay. I should say do some extra things. How sketchy does that sound? Uh, but <laughs> fair. Uh, the Tuesday I went, though, I did have, I was in the interview process for another job. And I went and got that last part of the job on that Tuesday and was offered the position on that Friday. So uh didn't work out so for me to have that time hanging out and hanging and banging at home on my own but i'm grateful uh that i was able to land the other job and the job that i'm currently at to this day so 
you know, I think uh, the moral of that story to, for, for me that I always like to say is for years I stayed in a, in a uh, field that I just was not loving and I feel like didn't really appreciate anything that I brought to the table too much. Um, and I stayed in that field because I was told you never leave a job unless you got a backup. You always got to be grateful you have something. And mm-hmm. at the end, I finally did take a chance on myself and left. That's when doors opened up and I was able to go and do other things. Yeah. And, and I mean, to, to be honest, the same thing happened with Amanda when she uh, a few years ago, she was also in a job that she did not like. Um, you know, it was it was bad hours. It was a horrible commute. It was, you know, all, all of the reasons why you would want to leave a job. And, you know, she was having like some health problems at the time as well and everything. So she just was like, you know what, uh, like, let me step back. Let me focus on what I need to focus on. And then. A couple of months later, she applied to become a teacher at um, the elementary school that my school is partnered with, and the rest is history. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, that, and I, I, I love hearing stories like that, too. I feel like, uh, you know, there's so many there's folks who, and I, I feel like I stayed in, in that field for far too long, and, and I feel like there, there are folks, though, who, who do that for forever and, and never get that opportunity to go and do something else. So, uh, but, but, but great times. It's uh, an incredible experience. I feel like the... Um, the, the baseball moments of my the more more recent years at least that I'll always go back to is uh you know game uh the wild card game where Soto hits the mm-hmm. line drive to the field and it goes back through the Brewers guys legs and and the Nats end up winning the game that's an amazing that's probably number yeah. one number two is probably that 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 Kendrick home run just because it was the first series they had won and uh always brings me back so it was uh such, such a good time and uh uh, this time of year, I saw it up, pop up uh, the half, half half Street High Heat, I think, put it up. Uh, he got a little too big for his britches and unfollowed me on my normal account, Tommy, on the spot. So I unfollowed him and then I <laughs> out and retweeted, quote tweeted it. I don't even know if he was on the same guy, but I was not giving him the satisfaction of thinking that I'd follow him if he wasn't following me back. Heaven forbid we had something like that happen. And uh, nobody has beat the Dodgers since. <laughs> that's very true. Dodgers and Astros both. Astros are smoking right now. They're, yeah, that's true. Uh, I didn't even know. It's hard. When, when, when the Nats and the locals are not involved and football season's happening, it's very hard for me to be excited about baseball. But, yeah, the Dodgers have been rolling. I think the Astros are doing good, beating up on, uh, I guess it's the White Sox. Uh, so, but thank God those Nats, man. They ended up winning the World Series that year. And if not, the cheating Astros would have gotten the World Series and how different things would have been if, if that were the case. Yeah, imagine.